Welcome friends to another r slash malicious compliance video. Today we've got a great compliance story all about handling very expensive merchandise. But first a story from Clever Cubed. Not a lot of the company party? Throw a bigger one and expense it. A few years ago I went to a very large week long conference in Las Vegas. One of the evenings our company was throwing was a massive party for our customers. These parties were known to be epic, and everyone there to work the booth looked forward to it every year. But at the last minute, the CEO wanting to keep costs down decided that engineers weren't allowed at the party because of the cost. Despite the fact that we'd been busting our butts for weeks for the show, our VP protested and was told to just take us all out for dinner on the company's dime. So our VP took us all to a very expensive restaurant on the strip and said, Get anything you want, let's max out my company card. Everyone got Wagyu steaks, expensive wine, old scotch, and all of the desserts. The bill came out to be around $15,000, at least 10 times what allowing us in the party would have cost. I'm not gonna lie, compared to the customer mega party, just having a nice night out where you go to an expensive place where you eat and drink probably the finest stuff you've just about ever eaten is probably way nicer than going to that party, right? What would you guys rather do? Go to this customer epic mega party or have an all expenses paid night out on the strip having just about the finest meal of your life? Let me know about you guys in the comments down below. Our next story is from Enough Upstairs 7842 Want me to pay at the cashier? No problem. I live with my boyfriend who owns a coffee shop. People tend to scramble a few 10 cent or 20 cent coins to pay for the coffee, so we always have plenty of them laying around. I usually use them to pay for groceries. I usually go to the same store because they have self-service checkouts, so the cashiers don't have to count the ton of coins I would pay with. I always go about an hour before the closing time because of work, take a shopping cart, pick up 50 to 100 euros worth of groceries, and pay at the self-service. It was a never an issue until recently. I was told that I can't bring the shopping cart to the self-service area. I explained that I was planning to pay with coins and it would take ages for a cashier to count it. And personally, I didn't mind going to the cashier. They said it doesn't matter because there isn't enough space in the self-checkout area for a shopping cart. B.S. You could fit at least four of those carts beside each other, and somehow people with prams and buggies were allowed, even if they were taking up a lot of space. I said whatever, and took my cart to the cashier. The shop was closing in about 15 minutes. My tool was around 100 euros, so I handed her a few money bags with my 10 cent and 20 cent coins. They were mixed up and not pre-counted. The cashier tried to send me back to the self-service area. I simply replied that it was somehow a store policy and I'm not allowed over there, so unfortunately she will have to count all these coins. I calmly added that I'm in no rush so she can take her time and thank her colleagues if she wants to. I left the store 20 minutes past closing time. If I was using the self-service, it would have taken me 5 minutes. Apparently at these checkouts they have, for the lack of a better word, dump machines. Kind of like a coin counter, I guess, where you can just like dump the coins in and it just kind of counts it all up itself. Honestly, I can't imagine being that cashier and feeling the amount of dread they would feel. Seeing literally two bags of coins get plopped up on the counter, I would be like, oh my god, please, no. I'd almost offer to pay for it myself and just accept that the coins are enough and take them. By the way, if you're enjoying these stories, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. Our next story is from Active Binary Trot. Security guard not at post. Told to cover and write a report. Okay. A few years back, I worked as a field supervisor for a security company. I drove patrol at night and had several accounts that I was required to check on and write a report for each night. In addition to this, I would check on standing guards at their assigned properties to make sure they were okay not sleeping, and provide anything they might need. I was given a workload that was nearly impossible to keep up with each night and was always in a hurry. To deal with this, I would call a guard as I approached a property that was standing and have them meet me at an assigned location on property. There was one guard who always seemed to take forever to show up for the meeting. Usually I had to wait 30 minutes for the guard to arrive. He always explained that he was busy when I called him. 
I noted this in my patrol reports to management to explain why I spent half an hour at a property I was not monitoring. I never received any feedback on this, so I began showing up at this property unannounced and would search for the guard to see what he was doing. After several times of not finding the guard on property and always finding the property in almost chaos, nothing locked up, huge pool parties after hours, cars lining the fire lanes, etc., I had a meeting with management to explain the situation. The manager was upset that I would even suggest that the guard was not there. I was told that if I found something that needed to be addressed when I arrived, then just take care of it myself and write a report for the property. The next night I arrived and as usual could not find the guard. I conducted a full patrol of the property, shut down the usual pool party, locked all the facilities and tagged the fire lane violations. I then wrote a report explaining the problems encountered and why I was handling them. I did this every night for a week. The security company lost the account, plus five others that were managed by the same property management. Subsequently, I was fired for doing the job I was told to do. I don't know, I feel like OP has an actual legal case for wrongful termination. I don't know if it would be worth it or not to OP to try and pursue this, but I feel like they could scrounge up a nice case here. They did exactly what they were told to do. Our next story is from KazBob48. Everything is locked in the display case. I used to work for a national office supply store 15 years ago in the technology department for the afternoon shift. The way it worked was the guy working mornings usually received the freight and would sort what could be placed directly on the shelf and what stuff needed to go into locked areas along with separating tech stuff from other office stuff. USB thumb drives at the time were like brand new and I remember a 1 gigabyte cost like $100. So stuff like that gets put in the locked display case. Usually by the time I got there, he was more than halfway done placing inventory where it needed to go. The first stuff to get put away was expensive items that needed to get locked up so a customer with sticky fingers wouldn't walk off with it. Anywho, morning guy quit and the store manager told me I was now responsible for his job and my job. I really gave it a go for about a week hoping the manager would either hop in and help or they would have a replacement soon enough. Needless to say, it was total chaos and an impossible job. When we would leave at night, stuff would just keep on accumulating from the previous days along with empty shelves. Then I got told that they hadn't even posted a job announcement and that they were not hiring a replacement. It was just me. Not okay. To make things worse, the manager had scolded me that there's stuff in boxes I haven't even had time to open that are out on the floor in the cart I used to transport that should have been locked away hours ago because somehow I'm a superhero and can do this even faster than when two employees are doing the job. Cue malicious compliance. I don't have time to sort out what needs to go where, so I open up that glass display case and just start chucking stuff in. Pick number two mechanical pencils. Yup, right next to those $100 thumb drives. Post-it notes? Yup, right next to that $1,000 Canon Rebel digital camera. Whiteout naturally goes on top of the boxes for those expensive laptops in the case. I fill the display case to the brim and was only barely able to get the doors to slide closed and locked. Then I go on break. Manager now has noticed this problem and is lava level mad. I tell him everything's locked up just like he asked. And I tell him that unless he has plans on hiring another employee, I wouldn't be working there anymore. We had another guy hired in two days. Funny how manager's attitude changes when they have to start doing the work. The ending is like equal parts satisfying and equal parts really, really annoying. Because I love the fact that you can feel like you put your foot down and they're like, okay, yes, we do have to hire somebody. But at the same time, you hate that it has to get to the point where the manager's like, ah, crap, I might have to do the peon peasant work. And that's the main driving force for them hiring somebody. Our next story is from Desperate Cat 2523 Don't like me flexing my work hours? Me, early 20s, getting a job at McDonald's, flipping burgers. I've always had high work ethics, always arrive early at work, and live and die by my saying, rather 10 minutes early than 10 seconds late. The thing is, not only do I always arrive early, I struggle with staying still for too long. So what happens when I get to work? I'm not exactly making myself a cup of coffee and sitting and watch. I jump in and start working. 
On the other hand, if it's very calm at work and circumstances allow it, I don't think it's a bad thing to clock out a few minutes early. And when the circumstances don't allow it, I also don't mind working a bit of overtime until the brunt of the workload eased up. With this being McDonald's, most of the time I clocked in early and clocked out late. The coworkers don't mind, the shift managers don't mind, the boss on the other hand is the type of person with a stick up his butt. One day it's been calm for roughly 20 minutes and we've done everything one usually doesn't have the time for in the kitchen. I have roughly 10 minutes left of my shift and ask my coworker, let's call him Tim, if they can hold the fort until the next guy starts and I can call it a night. He laughs it off and tells me everything is A-OK. I change clothes and get ready to clock out and see boss coming towards me. He says, where are you going? I say, home? They say, you still have time left on your shift. I say, I know, I came in earlier to help. It's calm and we've all done the prep and clean we can. There's nothing left to do unless a customer walks in. Tim can handle the kitchen no problem and the next guy will be here in 10. The boss says, if you're scheduled, you're supposed to do your hours. You can still clean something. Cue malicious compliance. After that conversation, I always made sure to clock in right on time and then go change and wash hands, etc., which resulted in me entering the kitchen a few minutes late every day, regardless of how many customers there were. And since the boss was explicit about sticking to my hours, I always made sure to clock out right on time. Whenever the coworkers or managers asked me to stay, I told them, boss told me to stick to my schedule. Sorry guys, it's out of my hands. Best of luck though. Line is stretched outside the restaurant. Ain't my problem. Got a phone call of three buses with tourists coming in. Nope. Boss asking me to help. Sorry boss, it's outside of my scheduled hours. May I suggest you grab an apron, wash your hands and help the guys in the kitchen? They'll get swamped otherwise. See you Monday. To be fair, I don't know how much you can really expect out of a McDonald's job, but you just gotta hate the managers who, because you're hardworking and willing to start early, therefore leaving a little bit early as well, love to call you out for it and try to like accuse you of being a thief and trying to be lazy when you're probably the hardest working person there. And our final story of the day is from Bare Minimum Chef, I did exactly as I was told. I'm a forklift driver for a supply company of the automotive industry, which means I'm supplying the raw materials to the line, where they would get processed into the final products like door covers, handles, cup holders, etc. My company usually has 6 to 8 forklift drivers in the morning and midday shift, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 2 to 10 p.m., and 1 or 2 for the night shift, in which production is basically non-existent and maintenance slash cleaning and tool changes in the machines take place. Today, I was assigned to the injection molding line, which is the first and most crucial step of all production of the entire location. If this line stands, the entire factory stands still, costing about 1200 euros per minute in material losses plus wages. The thing is, due to the pandemic, vacation season and the heat wave, the production has slowed down considerably from, as my workplace states, 120% to 70%. So we're already short staffed, even for 70%. Instead of six to eight forklift drivers, we were three, one for the injection mold, one for the attached warehouse, and one for the assembly. This means nobody unloads or loads the trucks that are frequenting the factory. In their downtime, so in the midday shift, the entire shift, usually the manager would be required to handle these tasks. So me, as one of the faster workers, because I don't have to look at all the logistic plans all the time, and knows where all the places are, helps where I can in assembly, because my station and assembly are right next to each other. Management sees it and thinks that my station has a problem because this has to be the case. If I don't work my butt off to keep the timing of the machines, and orders me to unload three trucks and load them as well, Unloading a truck and clearing away the raw material costs about 10 to 15 minutes. Loading about 5 because the shipment is ready beforehand and put next to the loading bay. This means I couldn't be at my workstation for about 20 minutes. The problem is that the injection molding machine works on an automated schedule and needs to be resupplied exactly every 6 minutes due to the size of the containers which hold the granulate. But being a efficient, read lazy, worker, 
I usually prep for about 18 minutes to cut down on travel distance and time if things get busy. I work my butt off to keep my current task inside said 18 minutes, knowing very well where the blame goes if the factory comes to a standstill because of no supplies. But just as I were to drive back to my workstation, manager comes to me and demands that I have to unload and load the next one as well, whilst he takes his 30 minute break. I don't want to, but I'm technically not a worker there, but a time employee, which meant that I'm not covered under labor laws for the specific workplace I'm assigned to. Think of it as like a subcontractor, who basically rents employees to companies for a given amount of time. So the manager can just tell me not to come to work anymore without any issue. Sure, my technically company has to continue to pay me, but I get a 3 euro bonus per hour on my base pay just to work at this company, which is on a voluntary basis for the contracted companies. Off to work I went. Of course, the entire factory came to a standstill just 5 minutes later, but management was out of house on break and I had specific orders to unload and load this truck, and I took my sweet time, since I had a coworker to back me up, since he heard the order from the manager. And, of course, the manager was absolutely livid as he came back from break. Honestly, even though OP did exactly what this manager did, considering there was a standstill, I'd be surprised if OP wasn't given the boot anyways, even though none of it was OP's fault. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. If you want to hear another compliance story that was absolutely crazy, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.